Hey everyone, gossip is the topic that I'm going to be teaching on today. And simply gossip is this, speaking negatively about someone to someone else who's not part of the problem nor part of the solution. And I think we've all done it. We've all gone there and it's not good. And that definition is not original with me. It's quite a common uh, definitions, but we're going to run with that. So speaking negatively about someone to someone else who's not part of the problem nor part of the solution, it actually refers to slanderous speech and basically words that are spoken with the intent to harm indirectly. So it's not a direct uh, address. It's not a, a direct charge or, or speech that is spoken. Uh, it is an indirect speech. The words can be malicious. It can be even very intentional. Um, often, at times, they're even accidental. Or, and it happens, we've all done it, just accidentally said something and caused someone to be put in a bad light. But there are also those times when, when the words can come from a place of offense or hurt or, or even a spirit of bitterness. And when you're thinking negatively about someone or you're thinking angry thoughts towards an individual, and uh, maybe they've said something to you or done something to you. If you dwell on them, eventually words are going to come out. And gossip, we uh, don't really see as bad as we should, as we probably should see it as. It is a sin. It is not good. And and uh, we find this in First Timothy, rather Second Timothy, chapter three, verses one through four. Says, but realize this: that in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips. And the list goes on. But it has the word gossip and the, and the activity of gossip, gossip is actually in this particular verse of Scripture and with all the other negative sinful types of things. And so, yeah, gossip is a sin, and we have to recognize it as that and uh, acknowledge it as that. And even though it goes cross-cultural in our lives, even cross-church cultural in our lives. Well, the word malicious gossips here is translated from the Greek word diabolos, and it means one who engages in slander. It is very diabolical, it's very devilish, and therefore very hurtful. Now, we know the devil did this in the Garden of Eden. The devil spoke maliciously against God in the Garden of Eden. Uh, he maligned his character to Adam and Eve and caused them to believe that God was holding out on them. Basically, he was telling Adam and Eve, God has lied to you because he has a real uh, intention of keeping you in the dark. And we see this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. He, goes to, he says to them, For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. That's speaking of the forbidden fruit. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And so he basically was saying to, to Adam and Eve that God is lying to you. He's keeping you from something. And he maligned God's character. And by doing that, uh, was able to bring a lot of damage. Now, the Bible refers to people who do this as slanderers, talebearers, whisperers, malicious gossips. It's very destructive. It's very hurtful and harmful. And the reason why that is is because it creates distrust. It creates uh, division and strife. And when strife enters into a people group, whether it be a church, uh, any kind of organization, even a business, uh, a workplace, once that happens, the game is over as far as having good and healthy relationships is concerned. So why do people gossip? Why do we do this? Well, first of all, it's the cultural norm. We all do it in our society. In fact, um, when I was researching on this, it, it was discovered that why people actually enter into gossip is because we want to connect with one another. It's a form of connecting. Unfortunately, it's not a healthy form of connecting, but it's what we do and it's what we've been doing for years and years and years. And so therefore, it's become the cultural norm. Secondly, it's a way of revenge. Uh, someone has done something to us. Someone has said something to us has caused offense. And we really don't know how to handle it. So 
out of our own hurt and pain, we speak it out. And we speak it out in such a way, uh, like saying something negative about that person that's hurt us and puts them in a negative light, uh, attacks their reputation. It could be a part of lack of knowledge that we not, don't know how to handle an offense properly. We don't understand Matthew 18 and how to take that offense directly to the person. Instead of we're just we're just hurting, we don't know what to do. We, we speak to somebody and, we, and in the process, we actually slander the individual. It also can be because we have a lack of courage to confront uh, and that may be the cause as well for wanting to take revenge. The third reason why we gossip is because of our own low self-esteem. Uh, for those who carry that, many of us do, uh, one of the ways that we can overcome that low self-esteem, which is a healthy way, is to speak negatively about someone else. And in doing so, we get bolster our own self-esteem. So that's some, one of the reasons why some of us might be uh, gossiping. Another reason why we might gossip is because of self-justification. Uh, to justify our own wrong attitudes and actions, we say, well, yeah, I know I do this, but look at so-and-so, what they are doing, and put them in a bad light or negative light so that it makes us feel better about ourselves or even to justify ourselves to others. And then the fifth thing is validation. Fifth way uh, why people gossip is, is because they want to validate their position. So, for example, you might be in a meeting somewhere and one of the, uh, the uh, committee members uh, has a strong opinion about something and you have a strong opinion that's not the same as theirs, and, uh, but the, you know, the committee goes with their particular opinion or their decision. And so you walk out of that committee and you know, you've got this strong opinion and, and you uh, feel hurt in some ways that the rest of the committee members didn't go with the way you wanted them to go. And so you start talking to the other committee members and you start you know, sharing your thoughts uh, to them individually and maybe you're gonna try to gather them and say, you know what, my de decision or my opinion is just as valid as theirs, actually it's probably even better, don't you agree kind of thing. And you start putting that other person uh, in a bad light. You say, well, they're always you know, pushing themselves around and they're always getting their way you know, and saying things like that. And so what that does is it puts that uh, individual uh, again in a bad light and attacks that person's reputation. So why is gossip so destructive? Uh, the source is satanic and the devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy, and therefore uh, that's, we've already discovered, it is founded in the demonic itself. Number two, it's, the, the damage is widespread. You find that you, you know, you think we're just gossiping about one person, but no, you're not only gossiping about them. As soon as you put that person's reputation in a dark light, then you are also putting it in, it, their family members in that same place, their spouse in that same place. Uh, you are also really maligning other other people's characters who are uh, closely related to them. So then it just tends to spread. Uh, and not only that, but because people like gossip, gossip just spreads like a wildfire. And so it's widespread damage. Another reason why gossip is so destructive is because it destroys Christian unity. Um, a perverse man spreads strife, the Bible says, and a slanderer separates intimate friends. And gossip makes for a very unsafe social environment and team environments. And thus it pulls people apart instead of bringing them together. Now, the other reason uh, why gossip is so uh, bad and so, so destructive is that because it destroys the gossiper, him or herself. It, it brings uh, destruction upon the one that is actually doing the gossiping. And it prevents them from dealing with the real issues in their own life, such as unforgiveness and bitterness. And gossip also goes deep into a person's soul and into the uh, innermost part of their, their psyche. And it's, we see this in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 6 through 8. And it says this, The lips of fools bring them strife, and their mouths invite a beating. The mouths of fools are their undoing, and their lips are a snare to their very lives. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. And so gossip has this way of just really invading our beings and really just uh, going deep into our innermost uh, uh, persons. And so the result of slander is that you eventually get a beating, the beating of a fool. 
And it's a poisonous effect upon the hearer, but not only upon the hearer, but also upon the person that's speaking out. It poisons that individual soul. So now there's a poisonous effect uh, as a result of the word that's been spoken that, that brings the individual into a, a negative light uh, so to the hearer and also the person that is speaking that us. We are poisoned against that individual and sometimes to at a place where that is irreversible. And that is the sad part about gossip. It also hinders the person's relationship with the Lord. The Bible's clear on the seven things that God hates in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19. And verse 19 says this, a false witness who utters lies and one who spreads strife among brothers. So one who spreads strife among brothers is a gossip and God hates that. And so as soon as you enter into that uh, type of communication, you put yourself now as one who is out of relationship with the Lord. And so it brings uh, a real hindrance in your relationship with the Lord when you start gossiping. So gossip destroys the gossiper as well as those that are around. So it's a very destructive thing. How do you stop it? Well, the best way to do that is stop fueling the fire. And it says in Proverbs 26, 20, for lack of wood, the fire goes out. And where there is no whisperer, contention quiets down. The best way to stop gossip then is to stop engaging in it and have a zero tolerance for it in your life. Stop speaking it and stop listening to it and you will stop fueling the fire for gossip. The second way uh, to, go to stop gossip is to apply God's word to your tongue. Scripture says, he who guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul from troubles. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. So we need to guard our mouths and, uh, from uh, speaking out things that are unwholesome. And I often pray over my mouth. I pray, Lord, guard my mouth that I don't say anything that I ought not to say uh, or see anything I ought not to see or hear anything I ought not to hear. Then uh, practical ways to stop gossip. What are some practical things we can do? We can change the subject once we hear someone starting to gossip. Uh, we can check our heart when we start talking about others to make sure that we're not um, spewing out anything that's coming from a place of uh, bitterness or anger. We have to be very careful about that ourselves. Um, walk away from a conversation if someone starts to gossip. That would be another way of doing it. Talk positively about the individual being gossiped about. Tell the opposite of what is being shared, for example, could be another way. And then lastly, in love, challenge the gossiper to check their hearts and apply Matthew 18 to circumstances. So make sure that uh, if you're uh, one that is listening and someone is starting and is going down the, the trail of gossip, you make sure you challenge the individual in a loving manner to say, you know what, this sounds to me like you have uh, a hurt here. Have you talked to this individual about what's going on in your heart? And then challenge the individual to do that, to go immediately to, the, to that individual. Some places have what's called a zero tolerance for gossip. That as soon as you hear gossip, you shut it down right now, right away. You don't listen to it at all. You point the person to the only uh, place where they can get healing, and that is the person that they have an offense with. Anyways, that brings the, my uh, teaching to an end on gossip. I trust that the Lord has given you insight on that. Father, we thank you for this time together. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you would give us the grace not to be those who speak negatively about others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.